We looked at adding tags to simplify searching, and you may have noticed in the last session how few tags I have actually made, but also that it's never too late to add tags, so I'll be doing a lot more of that from now on. What I've used to find my content is the search box. We won't waste time talking about what to search for. OneNote simply searches for whatever word or words you enter in both the names of sections and pages, and also in the actual content of those pages. What we will take a closer look at is the parameters you can set for a search. In the drop-down menu in the search box, notice the shortcut Control-F to find items on the page that's currently open. This is the standard shortcut for Find, and works in many different applications, even outside of Microsoft. This menu also allows you to choose to search in all the notebooks that you have ever opened on this device. This last point is important. If you created a notebook on a different device, or online, and never opened it on this device, OneNote won't know to search there. When I click on my list of notebooks on the left, I will see all the notebooks I have ever opened on this computer. I can click on Open Other Notebooks to pull more down from OneDrive. Since I have both a work OneDrive account and a personal OneDrive account, and I'm recording this at home, and the same desktop software opens them both, there is a mix of work and personal notebooks in this list. It's one of the odd quirks that makes OneNote unique. Returning to the drop-down in the search box, we'll see we also have the option to limit our search to just the notebook that we have open, which means all of the pages listed on the right. If you have created any section groups, you can search there. I only have one section group in this notebook. A section group adds an additional layer of nesting. While it shows up in my list of sections, once I open it, it has its own section tabs within it. As I click on each of these, these sections each have their own set of pages. If I click on any section, it just has its own set of pages within it. You can also limit your search to the current section, or even just the current page if you have filled it with a lot of content. The page search is the one that the Control F shortcut initiates. Let's see what it looks like when I search all of my notebooks for Sway. There are 15 instances of the word Sway appearing in my notebooks. As I hover over each entry, a pop-up reveals the breadcrumbs. That's the notebook, section, and page for each occurrence. It will also show whether it resides on my AACPS OneDrive or my personal OneDrive account. If we just single click on any item, OneNote opens that page, and the word Sway is highlighted, but the search box stays open on the right. However, as soon as I click on that page, the search column closes, which is convenient if I've found what I'm already looking for, but not so much if I need to try looking in another location. If I want to continue searching, it seems like I'll need to reopen the search. We'll look at a simple solution for that in a moment. When I click the search, it does remember my previous search, which helps, but we can do still better. If I clear the search term, what remains is a history of my current picks, in this case, the Nearpod tab that I am currently still on. I'm going to do a different search that will show some more aspects of searching in OneNote. When I search for the term eCoach, I get a lot more hits. Now they're divided into two sections. At the top are each of the places where eCoach appears in a title. Working our way down, the first entry is a notebook with eCoach in the title, followed by three sections with eCoach in the title, and finally a page with eCoach in the title. In some cases, it may even list a page that is in one of the listed sections that is in the listed notebook, if that word happens to appear in each of those titles. Below that are the 141 instances of eCoach appearing on a page. To the right of each hit, we get the breadcrumbs. Each section shows which notebook it's in, each page shows which notebook and section it is found in. Below that, are the 141 instances of eCoach appearing on a page. This is still a lot to look through if I can't figure out a way to narrow this down. This is why we showed you tagging before we showed you searching. Now I promised that we would see an easy solution for the search column closing when you either double click on a listing or when you click to open a page and then click somewhere on that page. Just click on the pin. Pin the search results and they will stay open on the right, as the pages you click to see will open on the left. We didn't do that earlier, so we could focus on one column at a time. As you can see, pinning does more than just keeping this column open. It also opens up the second column of information. 
Notice that all the results are listed chronologically and are divided by those modified today, this week, and then by months. Same search parameters as before, but we also have other options for how to sort, by section, by title, or by date modified. Date modified is chronological, and you have the option to reverse the order if you're looking for something you know is older. Sorting by title is strictly alphabetical. Here again, you can reverse the order, so if you're looking for something that's on the workshop page, you can list the bottom of the alphabet first. Since it's pinned, I can open different pages and the search results stay put. Sorting by section lists them in the order that the sections are arranged within your notebooks, according to the order of the notebooks in your drop-down list on the left-hand side of the screen. We didn't look at this in the last session, but you have all these options when searching for tags as well. So let's take a look at that now. There's a drop-down menu that we didn't look at in the previous session where we can reorder the way the tags appear by name, section, or date. This would be a little more interesting if we made this search for all of our notebooks. That's better. We can choose which ones to view or not view by clicking on the little drop-down arrow to the right. And at the bottom, the drop-down allows us not only to search where, but also to choose when to search. So I can limit my search to location parameters or by when the tags were added. This is also where I can create a new page with the results of my search, which as you can see includes a mixture of work and some older non-work related content in whatever order the tag search on the right is currently set for. As you hover over each notebook, it shows where the original was stored when I opened it on this device, and it is a mixture of notebooks on my AACPS OneDrive and my personal OneDrive. If we click on Open New Notebook at the bottom of this tab, you will see that I have options that are listed as both AACPS and Personal, where I have one note notebook stored, including some of my son's OneDrive account which is what happens when you record on your home computer.